fool settles for a title, a pedestrian settles for security, and a genius settles for nothing less than fulfillment. I thought we could cap with that for him to take questions. Well, I will tell you that when I was 16, I went to a um, the, uh, one of those job training fairs they have in high school, and the um, we have must it must have been I mean this was in Las Gatas, California. You can tell I have a certain disdain for the suburbs, and this is why this animal <laughs> lived there. Can you imagine it? Walking into Straw Hat Pizza and Baskin Robbins, it just didn't work at all. So I skated. That's all I did. I just roller skated. No, wait. Anyway, uh, so the the um, pretty radical job fair person said um, uh, they're going to trick you. They're going to offer you a title rather than um, a fulfilling work environment rather than the resources you need for joy and happiness. Mm. And, um, and the, I mean, the, it was so, I mean, the radical job fair person was, I mean, they were like an enlightened Buddhist or something. And, they, and so I, it stuck with me. Um, they said, oh, they said, uh, that's what you do with people who don't know who they are. They will settle for a title. And I thought, that is you know, back back in the day, that was that was really profound to mm. me. And then I started noticing, I started noticing um, how much I wanted to settle for titles. Mm. It's just ingrained. It's mm. just it's just ingrained. And so, um, uh, you know, I've I spend my life. They they fall on me sometimes, and then I you know, and they fall like barnacles, and then I pull them off mm. and fall. And so, you know, like. I love playing with it, mm. but I don't ever want it to be. So, you know, the, we we aim toward this title. It could be whatever. Boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband. Um, with the presumption that the material, the subset, will be inside of the title. Mm -hmm. And uh, very rarely is it. I'm not saying it never is, but I would say aim for the material and then wear the title like a loose garment. Then, you know, the pinnacle of the ordinary is safety and security. And so that's what you would settle for. And I, I usually say in my sutra studies, um, you know, my work is to point to the fact that there is an extraordinary reality available to every single person at all times, um, right on the other side of a curtain that you would never want to, like this quote says, you would never want to return. You would never want to return, and you would do anything to remain in that. And mm. the primary thing that you have to do is not concretize reality, not mm. fix it down, not lock it down, because it's the beauty and the wonder and the extraordinary quality of it mm. is uh, how dynamic and alive it is and how dynamic and alive you are in it. And, you know, there's... When we think about the higher quality feelings, right? Love, rapture, ecstasy, passion, all of those are dynamic. But our survival instincts try to make everything less dynamic and more fixed. Mm -hmm. And so in order to live you know, in that extraordinary beauty uh, you're, for a period of time until you're enlightened, I assume, uh, you're constantly tooling against what wants to lock things down. So that would be the pedestrian. And then, you know, a master artist is, is uh, in love enough with their canvas that they, they don't, uh, it determines when they're done because they're so in love with the mm. process. Mm. And so the, um, there, there's a ring. There's a ring. And when I was first... Um, doing, I think I said this this week, when I was first doing ohm training, and um, I, I have my first, you know, my first job was amazing, and then three and a half years were terrible. I did not, I didn't get it. I couldn't figure out surrender. I couldn't figure out letting go. I couldn't figure out relaxing. It was just baffled me. I couldn't get it. And so, but, but I would try to convince everybody that mm. it had been amazing, but I was with people who could feel that mm. nothing happened. Or, and by that, I don't mean climax. I mean entering 
into the state of total absorption, lack of self-consciousness, uh, sort of dynamic freedom, the feeling of being connected to everything and the feeling of being connected to your partner, the feeling of, um, for me, it's almost like two eternal beings mm. getting to meet each other again mm. in these bodies. That's what I mean when I say that's on. And um, so I would try to convince him, and I, you know, oh, and I would ooh and ah and moan and do, I would do ohm materialism. You mm. know, I was mm. the best. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I, I, I've, it was really liberating. I did, when I say liberating, I have the same relationship with this form of liberation mm. that you do with attention. Mm -hmm. Very difficult, painful, embarrassing, humiliating. Mm. Uh, when a teacher pulled me aside and just said, Nicole, when it happens, we'll all know. We'll all mm. feel it. You'll feel it. We'll feel it. And the whole room will ring. Now, we talked about it, this a lot this weekend, is you assume that that may not be. You run into doubt that it could ever be like that. That's part of the path. And then part of what I'm here to say is, no, it's actually true. That was my experience. Mm. I actually had that experience mm. where it rang. When I did a demo, it rang. When I looked up in my demo, everybody's head was moving together. You could see the room mm. all moving. And that exists in all dimensions, that there's, there is a something. There is a something that you have to suspend disbelief to enter. Mm. There is a fulfillment that you have to suspend the disbelief to enter and um, that's untouchable. There's an untouchable fulfillment. And, um, and uh, the thing is, uh, when you hit it, it rings. Mm. People feel it coming off of you. Mm. Who, Bukowski said... Um, the nature of a true, I, I can't, he didn't say this. This was not his quote. I give terrible quotes, but <laughs> I'll give you the gist of it. Um, the nature of being around a truly free person is you feel more free in their presence mm. 